Good day. This is Dr. Conrad Miller. It's April 12th, 2011. And I have some news for you about Fukushima. The government of Japan has admitted that the level of severity is now a 7. That's the highest for a nuclear accident. So now it's on a par with Chernobyl, although it's probably even worse than Chernobyl because for 25 miles out, the contamination is 2 million becquerels per square meter, and Chernobyl is still around 555,000 per square meter out to about 18 and a half miles. And Americans and Australians have been warned that they shouldn't come within 50 miles of Fukushima. So we know it's a little more severe than even they're admitting there. And the uh, aftershocks have been occurring at the rate of about three a day if you average them out. Just had three more this week that were all greater than six. They had a fire in the reactor four that was put out a few days ago. So things are still going on. I, we were talking about the workers. I just wanted to tell you a couple of things about them. Uh, there's about 88% uh, of the workers aren't really specialized. They're just kind of like day workers. They work for contractors in most of the plants in Japan. And uh, in the most dangerous places, according to the New York Times, uh, radiation levels would be so high that the workers would take turns approaching a valve just to open it, turning it for a few seconds before a supervisor with a stopwatch would order them to stop the job and hand it off to the next person. They say your priority is to avoid pan cool. Uh, which means accumulating too much radiation on your dosimeter because then you're out of work. You can't work anymore. Once you go over 50 millisieverts in a day, which is about 5 rems, remember 500 is fatal, you get 200 millirems all year. So that's 500, uh, 5 rems is 5,000 millirems. So they're getting a lot of radiation, radiation in that business. And then uh, there's a little note here in this article that's uh, about um, Tetsuen Nakajima. He's the chief priest of the 1,200-year-old Myotsuji Temple in the city of Obama near the Sea of Japan. And he's campaigned for workers' rights since the 70s when the local utilities started building the reactors along the coast. There are 15 of them now. He helped fa uh, fa found the first union for day workers at nuclear plants. And they made demands. Uh, the plant operators n not to uh, force workers to lie to government inspectors about safety procedures. But although more than 100 workers belong to the union at its peak, its leaders were soon visited by thugs who kicked down their doors and threatened to harm their families, he said. They were not allowed to speak up. Once you enter a nuclear plant, Mr. Nakajima says, everything's a secret. So, that's not so good. A um, couple other things. I was talking to you about the, the World Health Organization and I found this little quote in an article from Helen Caldicott before they made the WHA 1240 agreement where the, the World Health Organization and the International Atomic Energy Agency uh, would not release any documents or do studies without the mutual approval of, approval of both parties. But in 1956, the World Health Organization said this, genetic heritage is the most precious property for human beings. It determines the lives of our progeny, health, and harmonious development of future generations. As experts, we affirm that the health of future generations is threatened by increasing development of the atomic industry and sources of radiation. We also believe that new mutations that occur in humans are harmful to them and their offspring. And we know that if, if we see especially photos from Chernobyl which you can see on a video that was made by Carl Grossman, which, uh, in which he interviewed Jeanette Sherman, 
who was the editor and she, of the study that was published in English by the New York Academy of Sciences about Chernobyl and, and the 985,000 premature deaths. She's a toxicologist and a medical doctor. And uh, Carl Grossman, in his recent article, he was talking about the way things are talked about in the media. If I can find this for you quickly. He said that there's a book called Nuke Speak. It was written in 1982. And it was dedicated to George Orwell, who wrote 1984. And the book opens by saying this. The history of nuclear development has been profoundly shaped by the manipulation through official secrecy and extensive public relations campaigns. Nuke speak and the use of information management techniques have consistently distorted the debate over nuclear weapons and nuclear power. Time and time again, nuclear developers have confused their hopes with reality, publicly presented their expectations and assumptions as facts, covered up damaging information, harassed and fired scientists who disagreed with established policy, refused to recognize the existence of problems, claimed that there was no choice but to follow their policies. And Grossman says, in the first month of the Fukushima disaster, there's been an explosion of nuke speak by the nuclear power establishment, aided and abetted by compliant media. I'm going to show you a little example of this from the New York Times. This article was about one of the aftershocks, the 7.1 aftershock, uh, uh, earlier this week, or maybe it was on Friday, Friday, the 8th. And uh, they were talking about what was going on there. And here's the original article, and then I'll give you the, this is the revised article, rather, and I'll give you the original. Now, until the end of the video. Flashes of extremely intense radioactivity have become a serious problem an anonymous executive of TEPCO said, that's the uh, or corporation that runs the reactors, Tokyo Electric. Tokyo Electric's difficulties in providing accurate information on radiation are not a result of software problems, as some Japanese officials have suggested, but stem from damage to measurement instruments caused by radiation, the executive said. Broken pieces of fuel rods have been found outside of reactor two and are now being covered with bulldozers, he said. The pieces may be from rods in the spent fuel pools that were flung out by hydrogen explosions, which probably would happen, especially out of number four. But this is the way it was written originally before it was edited. Flashes of extremely intense radioactivity have become a serious problem. Tokyo's electric difficulties in providing accurate information on radiation are not a result of software problems, as some Japanese officials have suggested, but stem from damage to measurement instruments caused by radiation because it exceeds the maximum dose that they are designed to measure, this executive said. It's killing the measuring equipment, he said. They're blaming on software. It's their meters getting cooked. Broken pieces of fuel rods have been found outside of reactor two and are now being covered with bulldozers, he said. The broken pieces may be from spent fuel rods in the spent fuel pools rather than from the reactors themselves. Hydrogen explosions have flung them out of the reactor building. Quote, they're running bulldozers around to bury the stuff so it doesn't cook people going by, the executive said. That was cut out. Anyway, so there's a little nuke speak for you. And if you really want to hear something outrageous, I'm going to put a little link to a video that I watched from an outraged world citizen that should really get your blood running, whether you're a pro-nuclear person or an anti-nuclear person. This is Dr. Conrad Miller. Check out the video that I'm suggesting, and I'll be back with the next update in a couple of days. Have a lovely day.